Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we learned about the relative strength index and some different ways that traders use this in their trading. In today's lesson we're going to learn about another momentum oscillator which is known as stochastics. So let's get started. Okay, so I'll start by saying that there's three different types of stochastic oscillators. The fast stochastic, the slow stochastic, and the full stochastic. All of these operate in a similar manner, however, and when most traders refer to the stochastic, they're talking about the slow stochastic, so that's going to be the focus of this lesson. The basic premise of a stochastic is that prices tend to close in the upper end of their trading range when the financial instrument you're analyzing is in an uptrend, and in the lower end of their trading range when the financial instrument that you're analyzing is in a downtrend. When prices close in the upper end of their range in an uptrend, this is obviously a sign that momentum in the trend or momentum of the trend is strong and vice versa for a downtrend. The stochastic clo um, contains two lines which are known as the percent %K line and the percent %D line. Um, I'm not going to go into the formulas for each because uh, you know most charting packages or if not all charting packages, so packages that you'll use will calculate these lines for you. However you should know that this is a momentum oscillator, so when the percent %K line is rising, um, that is an indication that momentum in the market is increasing, and when the percent %K line is falling, it's an indication that momentum in the market is decreasing. The percent %D line is very simply a simple moving average, a five-period simple moving average of the percent %K line, and it acts to smooth out the price action of the indicator um, and, uh, and, and slow it down a little bit, So and, and also acts as a signal line for the faster percent %K line which we're going to learn about later in this lesson. Um, it's a banded oscillator just like the RSI so um, it fluctuates between 0 and 100 and the upper end is uh, of the range is, is, is marked by a line at 80 and the lower end of the range is marked by a line at 20. Um, the first way that traders use this is to trade overbought and oversold levels. Um, George Lane who invented the indicator recommended uh, waiting for a cross back below the 80 line when the market went from an extremely oversold or sorry overbought area before uh, placing a trade to the downside and waiting for a break back above the 20 line before uh, signaling a trade uh, to the upside. So you see here you have the overbought area, um, you have the break below the 80 line, and then you do have a sell off that results after that. Um, you have uh, oversold area here. You have a break back above the 20 line, and then you have a rally. Um, again, hindsight's 2020, and there are going to be false signals with this indicator as with any other indicator that we're going to look at. Um, one of the ways to reduce the amount of false signals that you're going to get is by combining indicators and combining methods of analysis um, using some of the things that we've learned so far. So here you have a false signal. Um, the uh, indicator was in an overbought area, it traded back below the 80 line, you did not have a sell off um, after that. But hopefully if you would have been, uh, if you would have watched our uh, lessons on trends and Dow Theory, um, you've been watching this strong uptrend here um, and you would not have been uh, taken into that trade there to the downside because there was not a break of that trend line. Here however, there was a break of the trend line. Um, and you had the not only the break of the trend line, which is a very strong signal, but also the uh, break back below the 80 line of the oscillator, and you did have a sell-off as uh, resulted after that. Uh, second way this can be traded as crossover signals. Um, the remember from earlier the percent K line is the faster line, the percent D line is the slower line. So when the percent K line crosses above. Uh, the percent D line. This is an indication that uh, it may be a good place to buy. And when the percent K line crosses below the percent D line, this is an indication that it might be a good place to sell. Uh, and this is basically a, a way for aggressive traders to catch earlier signals, um, particularly from overbought and oversold areas. So you can see here we've got a bearish cross. We were from our overbought area. We've got the bearish cross with the um, black line, the percent K line trading below the red percent D line, and we've got the break below 80 there. Um, you could have gotten in, however, 
uh, earlier into the trade had you been trading the bearish cross from the overbought area instead of waiting for the break but that's not recommended um, and this is this indicator like the cross of the SSI or RSI sorry is uh, very prone to false signals so be careful there um, the divergence is the third way um, and b very simply when the market is making new highs and the uh, or when the market is trading in the opposite direction of the indicator that's an indication that a reversal may be coming so um, you have a divergence here and as you can see the market's making new highs there um, but you can see by looking at the stochastic that momentum in the market is not following um, upwards so um, that might be a good place to look for a sell trade um, if you remember from previous lessons hopefully you'll also see something else there which is a double top so you have two things confirming that that might be a good place to place a sell trade you have the divergence plus the chart pattern there the double top and you do have a nice sell off that that results after that as you probably noticed in this lesson, the um, stochastic oscillator is very similar to the RSI, and they are both momentum oscillators. So many traders will use one or the other. They'll they'll try out both and and figure out which one works better for them for identifying the momentum in whatever instrument they're trading. Uh, and another way that it's used is with in conjunction with the RSI to uh, confirm each other. So uh, to confirm opinions on momentum. All right. So that's our lesson for today. In tomorrow's lesson, we're going to look at an indicator which is known as Bollinger Bands, which is going to give us a picture of the volatility in a particular financial instrument. So we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And have a great day.